Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I am in Vermont right now, and um, the Wi-Fi in my room does not work good enough for me to be able to live stream from up there or to be able to upload. It literally takes hours. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi works much better in the lobby but if you see what i have here to bring down the hook up between the microphone the mixer the streaming deck uh the wi-fi camera of course the charger for the unit all of the cables that have to be hooked up in order to do this you'd understand that after giving back and driving basically 50 miles to the job site each day that i just have not been able to do it i've just been doing everything off of my cell phone and uh, been okay with that figuring you guys have seen enough of me and you're okay but i was sitting here getting ready for my live stream because we've done this rain or shine no matter where i am with the uh with the channel members going on well this is the fourth season now of doing this after the 2020 season um it originally started in 23 excuse me in 2020 after the season basically for us to cry on each other's shoulder because the cowboys were just that bad and we've continued it every sat well, saturday during the season and sunday in the off season as a chance for us to get together and cry about the dallas cowboys so there's that um, I'm sitting here because my man Game Time Brian has got uh, his live stream going on. And, you know, it's. It bugs me because we're always talking about how much Dak Prescott sucks. And I know we don't have the playoff success that I would wish that we did. I want to see him win a Super Bowl. Trust me, I do. But, you know, I keep hearing, well, Dak sucks, man. Dak, Dak in that game, man, you know. He didn't do jack crap. He should have elevated and won the game. And in my mind this morning, I was thinking about this, and I was remembering a play. Now, understand, we're almost finished with the third quarter. In a game in which Dak threw for 206 yards, one TD, two interceptions, Brock Purdy only threw for 214 yards in that game, your leading running back, Zeke Elliott, okay, 10 carries, 26 yards. Nobody was getting anything. This game was tied up. And I want to play this clip because what if, what if somebody else had stepped up to make a play? Watch this. You know it was something he was probably telling him. Yeah, you're right. That's this type of game, too. Oh, it is going to take one play. Purdy. A lot of room now. Odin up over the middle. be a play to get him a little life and a little confidence you're gonna see Kittle he's not even really part of the route this is just scramble drill <laughs> Brock Purdy Brock Purdy kind of breaks the cardinal rule you never throw the ball back across the middle of the field but in this case George Kittle makes a circus one-hand catch maybe that can be a little what if what if instead of Diggs, kind of rolling out of there? I don't I, listen. George Kittle's a big man. George Kittle's a big man. But what if Diggs had sold out for that pass and knocked it down? What if? Because now, you know, it was something in a game that's tight, nine nine, or better yet, sold out and ended up getting a tip drill and getting that interception. Instead of being second and 10 from their 21, they're about at midfield. It's a play like that. And you can put all the credit on Brock Purdy for making the play and Kittle for catching it. But that's one of those things that in a game, that that's a difference maker. That's the thing that you look at and say, this is the difference between winning and losing. The inches that are literally right there. And in a game that is tough, like that, on the road, you need somebody. And I'm not saying that Dak Prescott shouldn't be the one to step up and make the play because, you know, we would need him to step up and make the play. You've got to. But it can't be just one guy. You've got to have your running back do better than 10 rushes.
for 26 yards. You got to have your defense be able to get those turnovers. You've got to be able to stop them on a drive and give your quarterback an opportunity just a little bit sooner. What if Randy Gregory doesn't tackle, doesn't tackle an offensive lineman and get 15 yards? All these little pieces add up to a loss. And you have to understand that you win as a team and you lose as a team. And there's no way around that. And I wish people would understand that more. So um, it is what it is. And um, I'm doing a test here to see if, in fact, my system works here a half an hour before my live stream. But that kind of just bugged me listening to everybody that just says, you know, well, just Dak, just Dak. You know, I agree. Dak didn't have a great game. But we can't just look at one guy when it comes to the playoffs because, you know, when you looked at the Super Bowl, it wasn't just Pat Mahomes that won the Super Bowl. Pat Mahomes throws an interception in his red zone down Ted nothing, just about in his red zone. And his defense steps up, makes a play, and gives him a chance to make up for it. And that's the difference. Your whole team, all phases have to play well to get the job done. It gets hard sometimes being a Cowboy fan. And if you think that the Cowboys are better off just getting rid of him and just starting over, maybe you get lucky and you get lightning in a bottle and you're able to find somebody who is, you know, better than Dak Prescott. Um, But players, great quarterbacks, are few and far between. In the 60-plus years... 64 years of the Cowboys' history, 64 years, we've had two. We've had two. So what you have to understand is you need to do everything, everything to surround that guy with people that can make them better, and that can help them perform. And I will also say one final point on this as well is you have to also understand that you have to have guys motivated. And Terry Bradshaw was 100% right when he was saying that they kind of lack the killer instinct. And because we've been put up on this pedestal for so long, so often, that it always seems like, yeah, well, the Cowboys, all we got to do is show up because... We them boys. It's not quite like that in the real world. All right, good people. We'll see if this uploads. And um, we will see you guys at 5. Peace. Scott just got another weapon of the focus. And CD Lamb is a weapon in every shape of the world. I fire Howie. Fucking fire him. Motherfucker. Stupid motherfucker. What an idiot. Cooper and Gallup, but we don't need a receiver. Are you kidding me? I don't want Justin Jefferson. He's ass. He's stupid. I fire his ass. I fire his ass. I mean, how he's got to be stupid. What are you doing? You just let Dallas take him. You. 